Welcome to the Deep Impact Investing Podcast with Kimberly Griego Kyle on behalf of Horizon Sustainable Financial Services. In this podcast, I discuss sustainable impact investing, how to create portfolios that match your values, and a variety of other topics such as financial education, environmental sustainability, social justice, and sustainable food systems. Do you want to know if your investments seek the kind of accountability from corporations that you demand? Listen in as I explore the burning question, are you investing like you give a damn? Hello, I'm Kimberly Griego Kyle, the host of the Deep Impact Investing Podcast. I'm happy that you have joined me again today. If you are a return listener, you will notice that we've been mixing things up a lot around here lately. And in that note, I am bringing back my favorite, well, I I like to call him my work bestie, (laughs) (laughs) Johan Klaassen. Hooray. Yay. So happy to have you with me again today. And I feel like the conversation that we're going to have, which we have not planned out at all, just sharing a couple of notes, is kind of a continuing discussion of episode 100 where I talked about a circular economy, what it is and its importance. And so the things that you wanted to talk about today really kind of go along with that. So Mm -hmm. if you haven't listened to episode 100, please go back and listen to that as well when we're done. So Not that it's a prerequisite or anything, because, you know. Right. It's not a college class, although I did give it lecture style. (laughs) which is kind of funny, but yes, not a prerequisite. And I think that we're going to have a really great conversation. Cool. I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. Just a quick recap. When I talked about the circular economy, I talked about why it was important, how a circular economy was expanding on just some of the newer environmental thoughts about recycling, reusing, recreating with previous basic products. So Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of where I went with that. I'm not going to go too much into detail right at the moment. I think I might bring a few things up, but tell me why this topic came up for you. Oh, well, so I just got back. Well, it's been about a month now, right? That we had the annual conference in in Colorado. Used to be called SRI in the Rockies once upon a time. Once upon a time. (laughs) um, Now they're calling it what? ESG for impact. And uh, so at the beginning of October, Brianna and I went up for that. And uh, first one I've missed in 25 years. Oh, good heavens. Yeah. I don't think I've missed one of those at all. No, Um, I don't think you have either. Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. No. So it was, it was a kind of a quick conference. It felt a little short, maybe a little abbreviated this time. It was, you know, two full days of sessions, but they were very intense. It was, it was a terrific conference. I'm not sure if I could have stood a third day <laughs> at the pace that they were pushing stuff through. Yeah, sometimes um, I felt like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, drinking from the fire hose, right? Right. Um, well, anyway, not to criticize their their uh, the way they put the panels together and stuff, but it oh, was... I don't, I didn't take it that way, but uh, you know, I think condensed and intense may be great. Oh yeah, no, it was terrific. Uh, there was so much going on, so uh, such a wonderful set of sessions. As always, you know, it was difficult to decide which sessions to attend. Oh yeah, uh, because there was so much positive, powerful content. Uh, it was just amazing. I loved it. But the, one of the things that both Brianna and I experienced, noticed, was that there was a huge emphasis on the concept of regenerative capital. Okay. Um, right, and so. Yeah, not just the idea that I guess the basic idea behind regenerative capital is that we can use our money and our political, well, uh, our financial system to make the world better, (laughs) but to put things, to put some things back where they were before or make them even better than they were previously rather than tearing things down. So So, let me ask you a question. When we talk about regenerative capital, I've talked a lot about regenerative um, agriculture, Mm -hmm. where you want to put nourishment back into the ground Uh and, you know, so that you have better crops and, you know, longer lasting opportunities there. Right. Regenerative capital seems the same type of thing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think that the, the idea of regenerative capital is takes regenerative agriculture Uh, as a subset. And so 
talking in terms of trying to use uh, our farm technologies uh, in order to create a, a better set of, of outcomes uh, and put uh, nutrients back into the soil that we have stripped away. That's one form of regenerative capital. Uh, yeah. Capitalism for a long time, uh, essentially since, well, since the Industrial Revolution probably, has really been focused on the extraction of value, right? From people, right. not just slaves, but also us uh, paid workers. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, what can we get out of this basic process here and how yeah. much can we extract from it whether it's people or or you know, or the land farms land, and mines right. and whale and wells and all that kind of good stuff too yeah you know, slavery is not so much a thing in the 20th uh, 21st century mostly mostly yeah mostly. i mean it's still there but that's a whole other topic that we could <laughs> talk about that's a whole other topic yeah, yeah. strikes uh, the strikes that have been going on recently you know the not just the entertainment industry strikes but the auto industry in the united states has just gone through a whole series of strikes which have been very powerful and very the train productive. system there was yeah. strikes with the train systems and right so you know those kinds of things show that workers have at least some power against the owners of capital and that, you know, not to get too Marxist on us, but we right. knew that. <laughs> but also also systems, because here in Oregon, where I'm at, the Portland School District, ha the teachers have been striking. Uh -huh. And and that's not a product that it starts from or creates. It's it's a system that they're striking right. against. And, you know, as workers asking for better conditions. Right. Yeah. You know, I honestly can't remember. I, I, I can't think about even being a teacher in the school system right now. It just seems really difficult. Anyway, so yeah, it's it's all of those things. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you know, you mentioned regenerative agriculture. That's certainly part of this too. You know, we know a lot now about how to farm with less in the way of harmful inputs, you know, the strong fertilizers and dangerous pesticides, things like that. In some respects, there's not a lot we can do about the the very dirty nature of mining for metal for you know there's no clean way to gr rip copper out of the ground we need a lot of copper for you we know do. if we're going to electrify everything which you know seems to be the next thing that we need to do for our our, our economy it, um it, but, you mean in terms of solar processes yeah, yeah exactly. that uses copper i didn't know that that's good uh, well know. if we're going to make everything electric uh you know we have to wire our homes oh, i yes. just actually okay. had to I have see. my house was built in 1973 as an all electric house of the future is a big uh, <laughs> a thing on the door on the doorbell it says you know it's got this little plaque it's lovely but it was uh, it it was built to be all electric and it, so there's a lot of copper that went in there when there was an addition that was put on in the late 90s where for some reason somebody decided you know what yeah this is very cool all electric house of the future but we're going to put gas heaters into these rooms that they uh, in the addition so okay <laughs> yeah exactly natural gas so i have these two natural gas heaters <laughs> in my otherwise all electric but so that you know to to bring the gas in is uh, there's steel iron pipes uh, there's not a lot of copper that goes into that. There's a little bit here and there for the thermal companies mm -hmm. and whatnot. But uh, not to get too excited about that. But uh, in order to switch back out, in order to put electric heat into those rooms, I would have to, you know, pull out the iron oh, and put in copper wiring. So yeah, in order okay. to electrify things, in order to put solar on my house, I'm going to have to do a whole bunch of wiring uh, on top of my head. I, on too, top you of know. your head. I would yeah. Love to. Okay, um, so that makes sense. You know, uh, not only do we need iron for things, because that's yeah. used in a lot of products, aluminum, copper, sure. all of those things. Yeah, but we have, so we have to have, we have to have copper to to do, to have our electrification. But there's no good way to get copper out of the ground without causing environmental trouble, at the very least, if not devastation. Yeah. Some of the more cautious mining companies can do it with less harm. Um, but it's always going to be somewhat it's, harmful. Right. And, you know, we know the problems that we have with oil and gas right now, right? There's mm -hmm, no Exactly. There's again, no clean there's way no, to get it. Mm -hmm. No clean way to get that stuff out. And once we get it out, it's very difficult to control uh, natural gas. I, can't, I forget what the 
percentages, but some surprisingly large percentage of the natural gas that we pull out of the ground actually gets away from us in the in the process of getting piped from place to place. Right. Apparently unavoidably. So that's always going to be a problem. Yes. And that's one of the ways that our industry has worked with natural gas companies is to help them see that it's a business case for them to make better systems so yeah. that we're not losing as much natural gas into the atmosphere and technically they can sell it. So it's more money yeah. for them, right? Yeah, exactly. And we can do, you know, there's a lot that we can do with more and more intensive recycling. We can recycle steel and copper and all kinds of other things. And there's actually been some stories lately about mining garbage heaps, right? Mm-hmm. We can actually mm-hmm. dive back into old landfills and pull out metals and other materials that we can reuse. I love it. Why so are we that, letting you know, it sit there? Yeah. Why would you let it just sit there? Right. So there's there's some that we can do there. Alternative energy sources can take the pressure off of our dirty carbon energy. There was a terrific one of the panelists on on a panel about the politics and the culture war. You know, the, all the mm-hmm. stuff that's going on about ESG as a, absolutely as a problem right now in in red states mostly. Uh, Gina Penn Tracy from the Minnesota Public Pension Plan. She said this. I wrote it down because I was so excited about it. She said thermal coal, which is coal used for for electricity generation, right? More or less divested itself, she said, with the bankruptcies that happened a few years ago. She said, I've been telling folks that we should divest from oil and gas now before those companies divest themselves. So, oh, okay. Right. Good. By I going, like that. By going under as their products become untenable for the long haul. So wow. it yeah. uh, was wonderful. I, you know, just the idea that, oh, those companies went bankrupt, a lot of them. And oil and gas companies probably will too, as their as the assets that they're trying, you know, the oil and gas they're trying to pull out of the ground become stranded assets, right? With things right. we just can't use. We can't get to, right. So when we think about this, you know, yeah, we've got this capitalist system that says, oh, we got to exploit everything as much as we can. You know, uh, we exploit our people. <laughs> we exploit <laughs> yeah. uh, our farms. We exploit our planet more generally by using these resources that are you know, these non-renewable resources. We probably need a major cultural shift, right? Ethically speaking, a system of capital and politics um, that's actively destroying its future in the name of current quarterly profits isn't one that we should be allowed, that we should allow to continue. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get out my soapbox for you because this is so important. Of I, a, I'm the son of a preacher. You know, my father was a, a, a preacher from time to time. And so that comes through uh, between that and my philosophy professoring, you know. Right. You were a professor. My so tendency yeah. to lecture comes out once well, in a while. Well, but... that's okay. I, I think it's great because this is such an important issue and something we have to think about. Yep. And I, I would dare say that the culture wars are part of that process. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, you know, there's the uh, that Gina Penn Tracy, she she mentioned that stuff about divesting themselves, those companies divesting themselves in the context of that culture war consultation. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, I mean, yeah, this was a terrific conference. But we kept seeing, uh, there were a bunch of these sessions at the conference about this general topic. You know, there was a couple of sessions, I think, at least one on regenerative agriculture. There was one of my favorite one topics. On place-based local investments. Mm -hmm. So community investment stuff as regenerative, right? Well, that makes sense because if you don't invest in your communities, those communities will die off. And think about what happened to or is happening to a lot of mining communities over the last 50 years. It's been pretty tragic. Well, Um, and and in (laughs) Western Oregon, the logging communities. Yes, yes. Uh, right. I'm very um, familiar with that because my <laughs> stepfather was part of that process. And, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. they basically went under and he lost a lot of pension opportunities yep. because of that. So, yeah. yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of community development investments. There was, there was a terrific session on indigenous investments. It was mostly mm-hmm. about how to help indigenous entrepreneurs and venture capitalists and so on. But it was also they also talked about community building in that context, that helping finding ways to provide venture capital or early seed capital to entre- to indigenous entrepreneurs 
was a great way to build those communities because it let it helped those folks to build businesses, mm-hmm. which this creates a- um, economic independence of a certain right. kind of certain kinds at least right. in those in those indigenous communities was absolutely marvelous. And so, you know, these kinds of community development investments uh, and uh, investments in entrepreneurs in underserved communities are designed to build bonds, as it were, among people within <laughs> those communities, build ties to other communities and and build a societal sense of social justice. It's marvelous. Wow. Instead of just having fragments of people who are. Yeah. Instead of you know, fighting for social apart. justice. Yeah. Let's put it all together. And I love that our community is starting to think a little more forward on yeah. those particular issues and where we need to go with that. I, I love it. Sounds well, like an amazing conference. <laughs> well, and it's funny that you should say uh, push forward, right? Because one of the key sort of broad themes that was running through the conference that, that Brianna and I noticed was that the idea that, you know, everybody's talking now about ESG and how, well, the red state attorneys general are suing people and, you know, trying to th- set things up so that we can't yeah. do our, our business in their states. Trying to, I don't think they'll succeed, I, but they're I trying. I don't think that. so either, but yeah, yeah. It's part of the culture wars, right? Yeah, it's a lot of huff and puff, right? But ESG is in, in a lot of ways just data, right? It's just yes. information. I say that all um, the time. It's data. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. Many or most ESG managers are asking that companies provide information right? We just want to know what kind of political contributions you're making. We want to know what plans you have in place for scope two emissions or scope three. Scope three. Yeah. I I hope is what, but (laughs) right. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I hope that we are going to push beyond that thought. Yeah. I think it's very important. You know, we do need that information. Yes, absolutely. But what are we doing with the information? Probably not enough. Exactly. Uh, not enough to, yeah, yeah, not enough to save us. And, and I mean, I say that, and <laughs> yeah. I don't mean like uh, in five years or 25 years, but we are destroying our assets, yeah. our planet's assets. And exactly, yeah, when I talked about the circular economy in episode 100, what I was really talking about there was how we take an asset out of the ground, mm-hmm. copper. We use it, we tear the building down, and a lot of that gets, you know, well, it used to get thrown away. Now it's really expensive. So people will strip that out and reuse Uh it. And we have to do that in all of our capitalist processes going forward. I don't know what we're going to call that, but it's got to be different. It's got to be better. Yeah. Well, a circular economy is a great way to think of it, or regenerative capital is another, you know, that's, that seems to be kind of the, the, buzzword i hate well maybe not a buzzword but the code yeah current, current phrase that we're that some of us are using to think about this right mm-hmm. but yeah so but this brings us to you know again thinking about time right we're i think it was andy loving one of our, our dear old friends he's a former baptist uh, southern baptist minister oh my gosh uh, but he is such southern a great baptist guy minister can you imagine uh, uh, that um, seems like an oxymoron, but yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> anyway, uh, I have... used to be more common than it is today. But at any rate, uh, Andy is a delight. He's retired mostly, I think. But uh, he stood up at a couple of occasions to ask a very pointed question, right? What are we doing uh, with that data? What are we doing with the ESG data? Why are we backing away from talking about sustainable and responsible investing or socially responsible investing or ethical investing or impact investing or whatever we want to call it. Why are we backing away from those words? What we want to do with that data, right, is use it to influence corporate behavior, to make the world a better place in some real measurable way. So yeah, all investments are future oriented, right? We're we're investing our money in order that we can retire later we're saving today so we can spend tomorrow. And the expectation is the investment will grow. Right. Right. Only sustainable investment, only SRI investment is conscious of that, pays attention to that, and carefully works to create a world that we all might want to live in. Yeah. Or, or other kinds of investment strategies, they ju- they are just looking at this quarter's performance, this quarter's profits, and take them however we can get them. Well, and that's how our system's been set up. And I I don't think that 
you're you're saying we should totally get rid of capitalism, but we need to change it. That's what I hear. Well, yeah. That's what I think. Uh, I mean, that, those are discussions that we've had for, you know, almost 20 years, you and I. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, my long term goal is a sort of science fiction scenario, right? The, uh, <laughs> the Star Trek universe where we've got right money is, means nothing to us today because we have all our needs met. But the way to get there from here is by taking our ex- very immensely powerful capitalist economy, changing it into something that actually takes the future seriously. Yeah. And I, I, it's, that's going to be so hard. And you and I, and so many people we know are out there cheerleading this process. And in some ways we do have to kind of take down capitalism or parts of it that, yeah. you know, it's because it's not about the quarter value. I yeah. mean, that's how a corporation is set up, but it's really about how we are reusing all of the products Right. In you yeah. know, are all of the components of a product, let's put it that way. So right. we reuse it until it's no longer usable. Right. Yeah. Well, over and over again. Yeah. The concept of the cradle to cradle uh, right. design, right? That was a, a big thing. Oh gosh, 20 years ago. <laughs> right. I mentioned <laughs> um, that too before. I'm like, this is, you know, we used to call it that. Yeah. Cradle to cradle. <laughs> and, you know, we, every part of our system should be designed to be reusable. We need to have systems that can take the waste, what would have been waste, and use it as the inputs to another part of the system right. uh, or like to this, another product. Right. Like this garbage mining I, that I hadn't heard of before, you know, in terms of looking for steel and iron and, you know, things like that, that would be in Gold there. even, right? Right. Gold. Yeah, of course, because... Yeah, from electronics. Right. It, there's yeah. a lot that can be extracted from from those products that, that yeah. can be reused. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a great system to work towards. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, it, it is a major cultural shift to de-extractionify <laughs> right. our, our, capital, our capital system, but it's possible... It's, I think it's. I agree with you. How it's to possible. Put it, is it just, it just a matter of changing the way we think about it? Make it untenable, make it impossible for us to actually think in terms of extraction. So something just popped into my head on mm. that. If we look at energy, mm-hmm. um, right now, most of it comes from non renewable sources gas, it, um, oil, natural gas, coal, you know, coal yeah. right? And those, we, we can't make more of those things. Right. Uh, it's just there. But when we look at a circular economy or a regenerative economy, we look at solar power, wind power, thermal power. Those are the things that do regenerate, that they mm-hmm. continually will be there and produce something. Right, right. So it's yeah. it's not that difficult to really make that leap. I agree with you. <laughs> not surprisingly. <laughs> right. I, I'm shocked. Well, you agree with me? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think it's interesting, you know, just thinking in terms of the the sort of mechanisms behind what I spend a lot of my time doing, you know, putting together portfolios. There are some of the alternative energy companies that we buy a lot of <laughs> for our clients' right. portfolios right. are they don't get classified as energy companies, right? They get classified as either technology companies sometimes mm-hmm. or just as industrial companies right because they are the, the things see they are the making are maybe yeah i can see yeah. industrial maybe but yeah well it's... the technology companies too cuz you know there's a lot of interesting high tech stuff that goes into right. building and maintaining solar panels in particular and yeah. you know the, and the the really cool controller devices and so on that that produce well they actually produce the power or regulate the power that's being produced in those systems I mean, there's some really cool technology that has to go into there, but those companies here, because they're what they're building is meters, power meters, and they're building these reg, regular reg, power regulation systems, and they're building the big honking blades, right? The, um, and I'm waving my arm. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, yeah, so, nobody can uh, see that. But. <laughs> uh, so you know, they they build the towers and the blades for the big for the the wind power. They're not extracting energy they're not extracting right. goo from the ground in order to burn it i would like almost building something they that's not quite true because you have to have a metal to build the towers sure right 
I mean, yeah. well, we can't, it's not like we can build it out of the clouds. We have to build it out well, of something. Yeah. But in a regenerative economy, we would reuse right. metals to create those towers and those wind blades. Sure. So as we tear down the uh, the coal-fired power plant, let's, let's save that. It. Let's save that steel, right? And, yeah. And reuse okay. Use that stuff to to build our the towers for the uh, for the wind power plants. So uh, you and I are, are going to go <laughs> carbon fibers and stuff, but probably still. yeah. So you and I will go on a campaign to to make sure that's happening. Let's recycle that power <laughs> yes. plant. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's beyond recycling, right? Uh, which is which is great. So. I don't want to run out of time. And before I give you opportunity for some last thoughts, you're shaking your head. No, I don't have any more thoughts. <laughs> I think that's about all I've got. <laughs> I'm well, so excited though. Oh right. my gosh, it was such a good conference. I am so glad. And I'm I'm sorry I missed it. I, I miss seeing people too. But I want to I want to just talk briefly about the fact that we're we're not saying we have to completely break down capitalism. Oh, no, we need yeah. to change it. Because some people would say, I don't understand what you're saying because you are investment advisors. So yeah. how do those two connect? Well, they do absolutely connect because so many people have just simply retirement plans mm -hmm. that need to be invested somewhere. Right. And while interest rates are not bad right now, typically you're not going to see enough of a return from cash to get you where you need to go in retirement mm -hmm. from for the majority. The long, oh, yeah. yeah. For the majority of people. So that's where we come in. That's where you come in because you are so brilliant at this. Oh. You wouldn't say that yourself, but I will. I'll say <laughs> of course <it>. not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, you're, you would never say that. I, you just, but you are, you're brilliant and you're oh, well, nice you. and amazing. And anyway, sorry. So in terms of regenerative investing, there's a new term, right? Regenerative investing. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that is what, you're doing with clients every day, exactly. Yeah. Looking at companies that are going to support us in the long term, right. and and create this better future. And it is part of capitalism. Sometimes we just have to participate in that process in order to yeah. change it. Yeah, exactly. So, and and we can, as I said earlier, you know, the part of the investment universe that we live in, we take the future very seriously because you know there's no point in saving up your five million dollars or wherever you whatever you have targeted as your retirement nest egg that's yeah. big that would be a big retirement nest egg yes uh, but you know it, however much you think you are going to need for your retirement there's no point in saving that in inv investing that in things that are going to destroy the planet we live on right because um, you still want it to be here when you're ready to retire Right. I uh, mean, think about a, a 25 or 30 year old. Yeah. You know, what, what, how are they going to, to look at the future and their expectations for that long term asset? Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so you know, we, if we have to look at not just am I going to be able to save enough money to retire at some point in the future, but also what kind of a world am I creating by means of my investment dollars, my retirement savings? That's a huge set of questions and we really have to ask those and we have to find some ways to answer them. Right. And I love that what we have done together and now you primarily over the last couple of decades is really work with individuals and, you know, even nonprofits to say, how do my investments reflect my personal values? Mm -hmm. uh, because I've said this a million times, I think. I'm pretty sure it's a million times. It's not about what you and I think is important or right. is, you know, the the ESG company. It's about what the clients think right. and want. And that is how you are directing capital for yep. our clients. Exactly. So. Yeah. We have to have a long conversation with every new client to talk yeah. about, you know, what their particular, what their biggest concerns are, what their right. most important ethical, moral commitments are. Absolutely. Um, yeah. In order to be able to build a portfolio that reflects that. Right. And I want to mention here at this point, two things. One, you don't have to live in New Mexico where Johan is or Oregon, mm -hmm. where I am, in order to do this, you can live anywhere in the country and give Johan a call yeah. at 505-982-9661. You know, I've been saying that number for literally 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's just crazy. 
call him and just have a conversation because I think that's the starting point of where you may want to go. Yeah, and, exactly. And do or that. send an email to info, I-N-F-O, at horizons, plural, S-F-S, as in sustainable financial services, dot com. Dot com. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Last thoughts, because, you know, 30 minutes goes by really fast, amazingly. So what are your last thoughts on this? Well, you know, it's I think the key thing for me about all of this is, again, that there is, you know, ethically speaking, we have to make some changes. We collectively, we culturally, and we individually have to start making changes. We have to look carefully at what it is that we're up to. And we have to figure out how we're going to get from here to anywhere, from here to the future. And we need to design the future we're going to live in. And one of the most, the most powerful tools we have to do that right now are the deployment of capital. Yes. How we deploy it. Invest in. Right. Where we deploy it, what we're doing with it. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And along that, when, when we talk about regenerative capital or a circular economy, because these are really the same thing. I ended my podcast on that with basically the the 20 seconds that were the most important <laughs> piece of that. And that is looking at these five things, uh, the five R's, mm -hmm. reducing, because we all talk about that, right? Reducing, recycling, blah, 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 right? But reducing, reusing, refurbishing, again, we're going to make those towers <laughs> out of a, you know, a previous mm -hmm. product, right? Repairing, recycling. Mm -hmm. So right. it's not just about reducing and recycling. It's literally about There's a all bunch of, those... of things in between there. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. All of those things in between and how long we can get that that asset to give us something that we can use and something we need. So yep, exactly. Thank you, Johan. I, well, thank I you. love having conversations with you. So <laughs> always a delight. Yes. Yes. Again, if you want to reach Johan, please give him a call at 505. 9829661 or email info at horizonssfs.com. I also want to uh, remind all of you who are listening that we have some exciting podcast coming up. Uh, I'm going to keep some of those secret, but uh, we're looking at talking about some not just gender lens investing, but racial justice investing coming soon. So oh, cool. hopefully I can circle that in on this conversation. But for now, I want to thank you listeners for joining me, Kimberly Griego Kyle, for the Deep Impact Investing Podcast and talking about socially and responsible impact investing. Johan? If you found this podcast helpful, we'd always appreciate it if you'd click subscribe and share the podcast with family and friends who may find these topics interesting as well. And as always, everyone here at Horizon Sustainable Financial Services reminds you to live your best day every day. Thank you for listening to Deep Impact Investing with Kimberly Griego-Kyle the Sustainable, Responsible, Impact Investing Podcast, reminding you that it's time to invest like you give a damn. If you have questions about this podcast or topics you'd like to hear addressed on an upcoming podcast, please email me at kim at griego-kyle.com. That's G-R-I-E-G-O hyphen K-I-E-L dot com or give Horizons a call at 505-982-9661 and be sure to ask for Johan Klassen. Don't forget to click the subscribe button to be notified when new episodes become available and to share this podcast with colleagues, friends, and family. The companies I may speak about during the podcast are not recommendations for investment. Only you and your financial advisor can determine what the right investments are for you. Kimberly Griego Kyle produces this podcast on behalf of Horizon Sustainable Financial Services. Horizon Sustainable Financial Services Inc. is a registered investment advisor registered with the SEC. Horizon Sustainable Financial Services Inc. and its financial professionals do not render tax or legal advice. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the host and or guests and does not necessarily represent the views and opinions of Horizon Sustainable Financial Services, Inc. This content has been made available 
for informational and educational purposes only. This content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service providers with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. None of this content may be used or duplicated without the express written agreement of the podcast host.